Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. I'm Mark Martin. U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Carlos Takera was involved in a Black Hawk helicopter crash while deployed to Afghanistan in 2014. Since then, he has overcome adversity and continues to teach and motivate others to push through their adversity to accomplish their goals. Uh, so we are on a routine mission to Maruf. Uh, to a local ANA compound. We took small arm fire, uh, then we hit a telephone tower and flipped as we were landing. I pulled out eight of my squad members out with my 240 gunner. I just want I just want my <laughs> my guy back. I just wanted Jake back. Like what I did was what any NCO would do. They're the foundation of my support. Uh, I don't think I would have been, I'd be anywhere I am accomplished without the, that support channel and that support system I have for my wife, my kid, and my, her family and my family. Going through aerosol school here in the 25th ID was the first time I was in a UH-60 after my accident. Um, needless to say, I was super nervous. I talked to my platoon sergeant for hours um, to the point where he was, he just told me like, you just need to get it done. Uh, you, you gotta stop thinking so negatively that it's gonna happen again when you have no, no idea what could happen. He told me to call my buddy who was also in the crash. He explained to me that I couldn't live in fear anymore. It's, it's, it, was over, it was over a year. Um, if I let that fear just cripple me and just handicap me, I, I wouldn't be able to go on and progress in my career. And I took that to heart and I'm still here. Four pictures laminated in my pocket throughout Ranger School. And every time I felt like I needed to, I wanted to quit, I would just reach into my pocket, pull those out, and just suck it up and come down. It was probably one of the most amazing feelings in my military career. You don't earn your tab, it's the guys around you, and that, that is the truest statement in the book. Next to never forget anything. Uh, the guys that I was with just pulled me in some of the lowest times I had uh, to graduate. But at graduation, I got pinned by my wife, and it was just a, a surreal experience. 42, representing the 25th Infantry Division, First Lieutenant Travis Smith and Staff Sergeant Carlos Tichero. I had that no, no quit mentality. Um, I felt that I was completely well trained up. Um, I was looking at other competitors and everything. And I, I felt personally that I could, I could hang with, uh, with the majority of everyone. But I, at, at Best Ranger, you had 51 teams, all Ranger qualified, and if not more qualified than that, they had, you know, I just felt just in awe of everything. My one piece of advice would be, you're not the first one to go through it, and you're not gonna be the last one. As long as you take it day by day, even if you're if you're, if you're only feeling better or less stressed one percent every day than the day before, it's still one percent.
for the crew of the Coast Guard Fast Response Cutter Robert Ward. Their journey from getting underway for the first time to the ship's commissioning has been a unique one. The Robert Ward is the second and newest fast response cutter to be stationed in California and will provide additional support to Coast Guard missions. So the operational experience for the pre-commissioning crew is nothing short of phenomenally rewarding. All the 12 months of hard work and effort that we put into getting the ship from the manufacturer to home port and be able to stretch her sea legs to culminate with saving three lives out of the Pacific Ocean was one of the most rewarding facets the crew could ever experience. So one of the biggest things that the fast response cutter brings to the table is its mission capabilities are so far advanced from what our previous classic cutters were. Our crew is capable of conducting 24-7 extended operations for up to three weeks at a time. We have the ability to reach 2,500 nautical miles and keep speeds up to and including 30 knots. An extensive array of monitoring systems, communication suites, and weapon systems that are so far advanced from any predecessor that there's really no comparison. What are we looking forward to the most out of this commissioning? Uh, getting into the game. We're taking a brand new Coast Guard asset, introducing her to the fleet. We've already gotten a little bit of experience under our belt, so being able to take a fully commissioned, fully capable, mission-ready cutter and bring it into the, into the mission set for the Coast Guard and be able to put our, our mark in history with the cutter is something that the entire crew is really looking forward to, given that our first patrol out, we were able to save three lives. So we're all really excited to see where the cutter is going to go further down the line and into the future. Sergeant Stephen B. Rodriguez, an innovation cell chief with Combat Logistics Battalion 453, says his team continues to develop cost-efficient innovations to help further the Army. Take a look. Name Sergeant Stephen Rodriguez. I'm here in San Jose, California as a member of the Innovation Cell, currently serving as the Innovation Chief. Reserve Marines often bring different educational experiences to the fight. Uh, the ones that we found here have college degrees or are currently pursuing things in the STEM field. Because of that, we can use their talents in the Marine Corps Reserve, and that will be, in my mind, a force multiplier. So tackling issues first within MFR will allow us to refine solutions before exposing them to the active component. Currently we have one 3D printer and what we've been utilizing this printer mostly for is uh, the body for our drone. So all the electrical components uh, now fit into a 3D printed body that myself and a couple of the other Marines have designed. The drone project we're currently working on has two cameras, one facing forward for the operator and an underbelly camera that allows them to see kind of surveillance footage of really anything below it. This can be used for reconnaissance, uh, we're currently working on the ability to modify it, so that way we can tailor it to the mission. We currently have a prototyped motion sensor camera that can track colors, shapes, as well as barcodes, and we'd like to apply that to our drone in the future, so that way we can utilize some of that functionality. With our limited funding, we have taken what very little we have and tackled big ideas to do our part within the Marine Corps' increasing need in the innovation field. Uh, with a little bit more, I think, I think uh, we could definitely help the Marine Corps more than it may even realize at the moment. Coming up, how CBN is stepping in to help a military family in need. Thanks for staying with us. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families. From repairing homes to providing financial support to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. For this family, CBN Helping the Home Front stepped in right when they needed them to. Right outside Fort Bragg, North Carolina, you'll find E-4 Army soldier Jesse spending time with his wife, Melissa, and their four children. Melissa is grateful that Jesse makes family time a priority. 
I'm really proud of him and I feel like he provides for our family and he's serving our country and so he's happy and I'm happy. Jesse feels Melissa's job taking care of the kids is just as critical. I almost feel like she has a harder job to be honest with you. Just having the, the mental strength like she does is incredible. When they got married, Melissa had finished college and intended to work to add to the family income. Their priorities changed as their family grew to six and Melissa started homeschooling instead of pursuing a career. Through the years, Jesse's income alone couldn't keep up. Eventually, they were way behind on Melissa's student loan payments. It feels like a heavy burden. It would take forever to pay it off, basically. It just got to the point where it just, you either have to eat or like pay off student loans. To add to their money problems, they learned their family van required costly repairs. At the same time, they needed to buy beds for the twins, who'd outgrown their toddler beds. They'd have to put the expenses on a credit card. Through it all, the couple trusted that God would take care of them. God has done so many miracles in my life that there's no way that some way this isn't gonna work out. Their situation took a huge turn when their church, Riverhouse, contacted CBN's Helping the Home Front. Pastor Stacy Long invited the couple over to tell them that CBN was going to pay for the van repairs and buy beds for the twins. <laughs> you think the kids the will girls. be excited? Yeah, yeah they'll be excited. And there was another surprise. Another thing that Helping the Home Front <laughs> wants to do is they're going to pay off your student loan so it goes away. <laughs> what do you guys think about that That's one? That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. I think I'm a little bit in shock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, but I'm really thankful. It's absolutely amazing. CBN arranged to fix the van and then took them shopping to pick out beds for the twins. Now that Melissa's student loans are paid in full, the family can finally get ahead. I've been praying for a long time that somehow, some way that God would come through for us, and, and he has today with CBN. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Philip Johnson is an army musician and comic book author. He takes us on a journey for a day as he fulfills his many roles as a soldier, musician, teacher, father, and comic book writer. Hey America, I'm Philip Kennedy Johnson. I'm a soldier, a musician, a teacher, a father, and a comic book writer. Before I got to the Army, I was playing in the Glenn Miller Band. I was there for about a year and a half, and while I was there, I kind of had my eye on the military for other jobs. It's great to have a job where you not only get to do what you love, but you're doing it for reasons that really matter. So rehearsal's over, and now it's time to put on my other hat. So now we're at Ariel's house. He's one of my favorite students. I've been teaching her trumpet for several years. We're working now on variations on a theme from Norma. Okay, back to work. Yep. We're gonna get back to this lesson and I'll catch up with you guys later. Obviously, I have two careers going right now, uh, music and then writing, and the more I learn about both, the more I feel like they're connected, or at least they're similar rather than connected. They're getting better at one has made me better at both. Actually, my way in to comic, like everyone's got their own story about how to break into comics. I mean. <laughs> There's a, an adage that once a person breaks into comic, that path in is forever closed to everyone else. Like it's, everyone has their own unique way to break in and it's, it's hard for anyone. Uh, my way was I actually wrote a kind of an essay, a blog post basically, but kind of an essay comparing the comics medium to jazz and how they're similar. 
writing comics, you are basically making small group jazz, where you know a small group like a jazz combo. You've got maybe a horn, piano, bass, drums, and if you replace any one person, the product completely changes. From comics when I was just a little bitty kid. By the time I went off to kindergarten, I was already using words like nuclear reactor and like, like I knew I had such a leg up on every other kid because I had read so many comics already. Um, Go! Who's on that one? Batman. Who else? Ace and Robin. Can I do the honors? Pull it out. Yeah. This is on old newsprint. That's why it smells like that. You smell the book? It smells like old paper. Time for us to make one more change, eh, Batman? Yes, the change back to our other identities. Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. <laughs> So right now we're going to Third Eye Comics. I love this store. So when I first started getting back into comics, maybe six or seven years ago, I, um, I saw a flyer just stuck in the median somewhere near Annapolis for Third Eye Comics. It had an address and I checked it out. And the store owner, a guy named Steve, and his wife Trish were unbelievably helpful and just super into it. They're clearly in it for the love of the game just awesome to talk to. I didn't know anything about comics anymore. I knew what I knew from the old days when I was a kid. Um, a new take on the X-Men called Astonishing X-Men that Joss Whedon had wrote, had written. And Steve was so excited about that one, he ripped the plastic off of it to show it to me, just to like flip through, like no pressure to buy it. He just wanted to show me the artwork by John Cassidy. And he was so into it. Uh, it was just really infectious. One very cool thing about this job is coming to a store and seeing your work on shelves. It's really exciting. It's never really gets old. So we have a couple copies of Last Sons of America. The Last Sons was my first published graphic novel. Um, it's basically a world in which Americans can't have kids anymore. Um, I try to tell stories that matter to me and then dress them up in exciting comic booky ways. So writing original stories, like your own stories, is extremely exciting and super fun. It's also really fun to do license work. I didn't know how I was going to feel about that, if that opportunity ever came, but when it did, it was incredibly fun. Um, I think my first one was Adventure Time. Like, yes, I love Adventure Time, and I'd never seen it, and I just started mainlining the show, and it was really fun to get into a show that I didn't know I was going to like, but ended up really digging it. So that was a fun opportunity, and then that led to an opportunity to write The Power of the Dark Crystal, which was a huge thrill, because I am the biggest Jim Henson fan ever. I mean, it's a guy who's whole life was just about making beautiful things and being creative and just putting beautiful things in the world, making it a better place. And I, just, I love his work. So getting to write Dark Crystal was ridiculous. Okay, America, thanks so much for spending the day with me. I'm Philip Kennedy Johnson. It's been a pleasure. Batman is getting a little wiped here. I think I'm going to get him back to the cave. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. For one Navy veteran, his goal was to help others fulfill their entrepreneurial dreams. Take a look. My name is Jason Hardeback. I was in the uh, United States Navy. I was commissioned from the Naval Academy in 1987, and I served five years as a surface warfare officer with nuclear engineering. I 
did not really grow up with entrepreneurs in my family. Probably as a kid, I just became fascinated with the idea of, of creating your job. And you know, the, the, uh, I used to read a lot of books and, and stories about any you know people who, who started with with an idea and grew it into a huge company. And um, after I left the Navy, uh, I worked for a number of different startups in different technology fields and just kind of find myself working my way towards becoming an entrepreneur. Every bit of my success as an entrepreneur can be directly linked back to my, my uh, military experience, both four years at the academy and five years as a commission officer. The most rewarding part about being an entrepreneur to me is to create something that takes on a life of its own without you. I've always found it incredibly satisfying to be able to kind of step back and see that organization uh, continue on or, or thrive. Being an entrepreneur gives me the opportunity to tackle things that um, I decide are important. Um, the leadership and management skills I learned in the military are absolutely essential. Uh, to any of the jobs they've had, let alone being an entrepreneur. You become an entrepreneur because you want to make a difference, you want to change the world um, in whatever way you, you decide. Um, and to me, that's the kind of mark that I want to make, is doing something nobody else has ever done. That's going to do it for this edition of On the Home Front. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.